Welcome to our Moments of Mission program. In today's session, we will recount the early life of Venerable Mary Angeline Teresa, the foundress of the Carmelite Sisters for the Aged and Infirm. Our focus will be on how her early experiences helped to form the person she would become and how these experiences led to her philosophy of caring for the elderly. In looking at Mother Angeline's story, we can in turn reflect on our own lives. How have our life's experiences formed us, and what do we bring to our work with the elderly? To begin, Mother Angeline was born on January 21, 1893, in Bracca, County Tyrone, Northern Ireland. At that time, her village was called Mountjoy, but has since returned to its original name. She was the second of five children born to Thomas McCrory and Bridget Taggart McCrory and was baptized in St. Bridget's Church on January 22, 1893. Mother grew up on a large farm in the Upper Back near Laune, Ireland's largest inland lake. She had a happy childhood and loved her time attending the local school where she was an excellent student. She developed a fondness for her maternal grandfather, and this relationship sowed the seeds of her love for the elderly. There was a dark side to the family's life in Ireland, however. At the time, the Catholic population of Northern Ireland was persecuted for their faith and discriminated against in employment practices and in other ways. It was difficult for a Catholic to have the wherewithal to support a family and over a 50-year period, three million working-age men and their families emigrated to other countries. When Mother Angeline was seven, her father made that painful decision, and the family moved to a town outside Glasgow, Scotland. Mr. McCrory was able to obtain work at the Clydesdale Steelworks, and the family became used to urban living. Shortly after arriving in Scotland, a measles epidemic claimed the life of mother's sister Anna, who was only three years old. Her younger brother James was also destined to die of a tetanus infection 19 years later. There were happy times in Scotland as well, however. Mother was the ringleader of adventures with her siblings. One day her mother was cleaning the second floor of the house and looked out the window, only to find herself eye to eye with her daughter Bridget looking in. It seems that a neighbor owned a pair of stilts, and Mother Angeline thought her mother would enjoy seeing her use them. Mother continued her education in Scotland and excelled in many subjects, especially the French language. She graduated from the Elmwood Convent School in Bothwell in 1912. During this time, she got to know the Little Sisters of the Poor, a French congregation who cared for the elderly and who made rounds collecting to support their ministry. Mother also assisted the local pastor by helping in the church, arranging flowers for the altar, and helping in the sacristy. The McCrory family was to suffer another tragedy in 1911. The day before her 18th birthday, Mother Angeline's father died as a result of severe burns suffered in an injury at the steel mill. He lingered in pain for 29 days before succumbing to his injuries. Mr. McCrory was 40 years of age. A year later, the then Bridget McCrory decided to enter the Little Sisters of the Poor. On February 2, 1912, she was to leave to begin her postulancy. The evening before, her pastor, Dean Cronin, offered her any book from his library. She chose the life of St. Teresa of Avila, a great Carmelite saint. How prophetic was her choice, as in a few years she herself would become a Carmelite. After a long train trip, during which she soothed her sorrows by eating a whole box of chocolates, she arrived in London for an overnight, then on to Paris, where she perfected her French during her postulancy. She entered the novitiate of the Little Sisters at La Tour on February 14, 1913, received the habit on September 8, 1913, 
and her new name, Sir Marie Angeline de Saint Agathe. Sister Marie Angeline pronounced her first vows on March 19, 1915, and a portion of La Tour became an infirmary for French soldiers. Mother's first mission was delayed by the war, but she finally left for the United States on October 15, 1915, the feast of St. Teresa of Avila. She traveled by ship through enemy waters, where German U-boats were sinking passenger ships such as the Lusitania, which had gone down in May of that year. Mother's first assignment was St. Augustine's home in Brooklyn, New York, where she remained for nine years, caring for the elderly, collecting alms in the local neighborhoods, and becoming immersed in the American culture. At age 26, she became a counselor to the local superior and returned to France to make her perpetual vows on April 21, 1925. After final vows, she was assigned to the home in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for a short period, then became superior of Our Lady's Home in the Bronx, New York, in 1926. As superior and administrator, she sought to make the facility more homelike and more in keeping with the standards of the United States. She decorated the home to make it cheerier, allowed husbands and wives to share a room if able, encouraged as much independence and freedom as was possible, and celebrated American holidays. A visit from the Mother General from France put an end to these innovations, however, as after the turmoil of World War I, the leadership of the congregation wanted to restore a sense of unity and order, not strike out on new paths. The Little Sisters take a fourth vow of hospitality, and Mother Angeline felt strongly that she could not live out that vow if she had to care for the elderly in America identically to the way it was done in France. She also wished to serve not only the destitute, but the middle-class elderly who had no place to turn. With the advice and assistance of Patrick Cardinal Hayes, Archbishop of New York, Mother Angeline and six companions left the Little Sisters of the Poor in August of 1929 and began the Carmelite Sisters for the Aged and Infirm on September 3, 1929, a month before the fall of the stock market and the subsequent Great Depression. They were given an empty rectory in Upper Manhattan and lived there with seven residents until they were able to purchase a building that would become St. Patrick's Home in 1931. Thus we have a quick synopsis of the early life of Venerable Mary Angeline Teresa. How did her life experiences shape her as a person and influence her philosophy of caring for the elderly? By the time of the founding of the new congregation in 1929, Mother had lived in four countries, was fluent in two languages, tragically lost members of her immediate family, lived through the horrors of World War I, experienced faith discrimination, developed a deep love of the elderly, and became immersed in the culture of the United States. Her early experiences led to a deep faith, love of the elderly, a broad perspective on life, love for the American spirit, and attempts to care for the elderly in the American way. She stressed the resident's need for independence and privacy. She honored the bond of spouses who wished to share a room and cared for all persons, not just the destitute. Mother made sure there was a chapel in each home to meet the resident's spiritual needs and saw to it that national holidays were observed. She strove to create facilities that met the needs of the times, and her motto was, try to be kinder than kindness itself. She noted, Efficiency is wonderful, but it should never replace kindness. All professional skill should stem from the kindness and compassion of Christ. Mother recognized how difficult it was for the elderly to leave their homes with their familiar surroundings, friends, and relatives, and how lonely life could be for them. She planned parties and surprises to break the monotony of institutional life and encouraged the residents to decorate their rooms with familiar objects that would bring them comfort. 
We all have life experiences that we bring to our work with the residents. Some memories are happy, some not so much. But they have helped form us into the people we are now and influence the way we look at life. May listening to Mother Angeline's story inspire us to consider our own life experience and encourage us to give the very best we are to our residents, overcoming any obstacles in our way to that goal. We have a rich heritage of caring handed down from Mother Angeline. May we keep alive her spirit and continue to meet the needs of the times. Thank you for your part in this story.